y'all i just saw the best promotion of sysbm and passport bowls that i've seen probably since the passing of kevin samuels by now you've probably heard about the interview that happened on fox soul that included umar johnson and cynthia g and uh, i mean it's been breaking its rounds over the last few days causing quite a bit of stir but so my initial thoughts are this as long as there is a cynthia g that continues to have a voice and a platform and a pool and influence then we will continue to see sysbm and passport bros grow in influence she, in my humble opinion, has become the best number one marketer for this movement because she embodies in one person all of the different things that black men who do grab their passports or who do go SYSBM are trying to avoid. A woman who openly disrespects, hates them, doesn't see anything they, that they can do as good enough, doesn't see them really as human, sees them as all the issues, basically just a woman who hates their guts and disrespects them. She embodies that in the most perfect way possible. And so when you have someone like her who openly is a misandrist and who was quite proudly a misandrist, when you have somebody like her come on and discuss these things that are supposed to be for the community, right? Um, and voice her opinion, as if she's speaking for the collective of black women, again, this gives those movements a boost. It gives those, it, it, in some ways, it validates those movements. It does. You know, another thing I'm thinking is, why is she allowed to come on after openly advocating for the genocide of a people group? There's, there's, there is no way if a man did the same thing, if a man openly called for the abortion of black women children of black female children that he would be allowed on there, there's no way he would have been canceled so long ago so why is she even given a voice or put on some of these different prominent channels when she has openly said things that are just quite frankly hateful i, I don't I, to me that in and of itself is problematic it reinforces my earlier point as to why as long as cynthia g exists we're going to continue to see passport bros and sysbm gain in popularity or at the very least have a place in the black community it's not going anywhere as long as these ideas as long as these beliefs as long as influencers such as herself continue to have a place on center stage another thing that 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 bothered me about this interview was the unwillingness to acknowledge in any way shape or form not only the oppression and to even acknowledge any contributions it is utterly utterly disgusting and disrespectful to sit online and to minimize the contributions of the different historical figures mentioned in that argument while benefiting off of the hard work and labor of those individuals the very fact that black women as a collective that we have even the right to go online and complain and bicker and say all these horrible things about men is because men fought it's because black men and black women got together and fought for our rights. So it is so disrespectful to our ancestors and to those who have lost lives and to those who gave up liberties. It is so disrespectful to them when we go up here and act like none of their work mattered. When if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for them fighting, we may very well still be on the plantation. It is, it is, it is the, the, the most disgusting thing that I have seen online in a long time because it's just so disrespectful and then on top of that the inability the inability to identify the ills of black women something that i hear her bring up all the time she likes to go back to history and talk about the different um, black men who benefited from the slave trade granted she conveniently overlooks the black woman who also benefited from the slave trade like fenda lawrence and madden tanubu who also sold out their people for the slave trade. She conveniently overlooks that. Those individuals, those collaborators were a small minority. They are a small minority, but that is, I think that is the, the, the foundation of her argument is a lie because it conveniently overlooks and omits the full picture. You had black men and black women who were collaborating, not leading necessarily, but collaborating in the slave trade. But you cannot blame black men exclusively for something that black women and men 
were involved in. Not to mention, again, that was a small minority, the overwhelming majority of Black Americans, even Africans, were fighting against the colonial project. So again, it is a false premise. But again, you know, you, you see this constant and constant need to throw out all these false statistics that every five hours, I broke that down in another video. The black men, you know, selling us out as a black woman also didn't do that. And then all these, all this narrative about black men leaving their children and all this different stuff, all this narrative that is consistently debunked over and over again. Not to mention, I can't identify with most of her narrative. And there's, and there's plenty of black women out there who feel the same way. So it's just dishonest. It is completely and totally dishonest because if you have the nerve to put out historical facts, but conveniently overlook the full truth, we all know it's a false narrative. And also another thing that, that to me that I think was just really chaotic, it's so obvious that this was more about getting clicks and views and it was not about being productive. It was not about moving the needle forward. It was not about, you know, men and women getting together and trying to, you know, bridge gaps. This is why, this is why it was just so disturbing to me because again, other cultures, other cultures have their issues. Just keep it real. They have their stuff. You, 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 you talk to other people long enough. You talk to, you know, Chinese people long enough, Indian people long enough, Mexican people, they're going to tell you about issues they have in their cultures. But when it comes to who's going to represent who, when it comes to, okay, who's going to be the spokesperson for this community, best believe they are choosing their best representations. They are choosing the ones that they say, okay, this is the image we want to promote. Black America, on the other hand, has a PR crisis. It seems we can choose sometimes the most, the most disgruntled, the most angry, the people with the most amount of failures, the people with the least amount of credentials. We can put those sometimes at the forefront of the conversation. And this is what I think is happening in here. Why are two black women for all intents and purposes have results that most black women wouldn't agree with? Even if, even if they have themselves, they don't agree with it. Why are they the ones at the forefront of the conversation? For example, you have Hope, who's a trans activist, but a lot of black women don't even agree with trans. You got a lot of black women who don't even mess with trans. They think trans are causing more problems, and yet she's gonna speak on behalf of black women? And then if we think of Cynthia G, I mean, let's just be honest, she's speaking from her own life experience. This is why she's so passionate about talking about selective breeding and complaining about black men who, you know, leave their families or don't pay for the child support or, or whatever issue it is that she's talking about. She's speaking from her own experience. So again, even if black women maybe can relate to this on some level, uh, nobody wants those results. You got a black woman here with failed results, failed results, failed life results, but she's speaking on behalf of black women. She's the one leading the conversation. Other cultures don't do that. They hide those with failed results or they make sure they don't have the mic and they have ones with successful results leading the conversation. This is why, in my opinion, this entire conversation was meaningless. It did nothing but give black men yet another reason to go grab the passports and get women from other countries who are gonna give them what they want. As long as a Cynthia G can exist and her rhetoric can exist, we're going to see more black men talk about grabbing their passports and we're gonna see more support. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know what you think. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns in the comment section below. Also, be sure to check out my How to Be a Wife series, where we are fostering a diverse community of women who are committed to becoming productive and honorable wives in the midst of a culture that promotes fear fours. Hit the subscribe and notification bell so you're notified each time a video drops. Thank you so much for listening. If you have gotten this far and We'll talk later.